What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now, in this video, we're gonna tackle a miter saw station. I wanna build a kind of workbench and miter saw station, something that will tackle the dust and uh, save some space. That's the plan. So, I need to incorporate this big Bosch miter saw into it. I need to move my router table, and the plan then is to take all those tool cabinets and fit them in up here. Now, as always, budget dictates what's possible, so I'm gonna build the benches from four by twos, two by fours, and we're gonna use some 18 millimeter or three quarter inch plywood for the top and the bottom. And the plan is to size it to suit the sheets of plywood. So I only wanna split the plywood roughly down the middle, use that for my top and for a shelf underneath, and just build a nice, simple, frame then from the two by fours. So that is the plan. We have a few little issues that I have to try and work around here. So I'll show you them now before we kick off. And then uh, it should be a pretty straightforward build. So let's get into it. Okay, the first issue I'm gonna have is this miter saw itself. Now this is the Bosch GCM uh, 12 SDE and it's a pretty massive miter saw. Uh, it needs a lot of room at the back and a lot of room around it. So that's one of the biggest issues I'm going to have. A standard worktop would be 600 or two feet out. I'm going to have to keep this section out roughly 700 or 28 inches. So that's going to be one of the considerations. The next thing I have to try and do is incorporate this cowl into the back of the unit itself. That's another thing I have to try and think about. I have an idea, as always, and not quite a plan, so this will evolve as we go through the build. So that's the first thing I need to do. Next thing I need to do is make sure that I can fit my largest cabinet underneath it, so I have to keep it high enough to incorporate the cabinet. And then I'm gonna either decide to incorporate the router table or just leave the router table stay standalone down there. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is build the bench that's gonna sit on this side. And then we'll see how much timber that's gonna take up. We'll see how that goes together and then we can make a decision on the rest of the build. So this should be straightforward enough. So let's just jump into it. Okay, let's get this router table moved and out of the way. That's the first job. Okay, I have the camera back in the back corner, just to give you some perspective, you can see where this is going to go now. And you can see the amount of wasted space that I have. So all this space underneath the miter saw stand and all that, that's all space that could be utilized. And I can put all these cabinets in there and that will free up all this space. Then I'm gonna get rid of that shelving unit. So that will free up space in the corner. And so hopefully the idea is to capture space by installing this and not lose space. So this is the materials right here in front of us. These are eight foot lengths of four by two or two by four, depending on where you are. And we have sheets of WBP ploy, or it's just a kind of a high grade ploy. It's not as high grade as birch ploy, but it's not too far off. It's a decent quality ploy. It's 18 millimeters or three quarters of an inch thick. And like I say, we're gonna to work to the dimensions of the plywood. So I'm gonna keep the first table, the full length of a sheet of plywood. Um, and we'll see how we get on, and we're gonna roughly split it in the middle. It won't be quite in the middle, because the, the shelf that goes underneath will be narrower than the top. So we'll, give, we'll get all those dimensions when we build our frame. So let's crack on and build the frame. Okay, first thing we need to do is cut all the legs for the frames. Now I'm gonna be using an L-shaped leg, so it's gonna be two pieces of two by four, or four by twos, to um, make up our four legs. So I'll make them first, and I want my worktop to be roughly 40 inches to the top, or 1,020 millimeters, and my top is 18 millimeters. So I'm gonna cut all the legs at exactly one meter. So that should be good. That will give me my top within two mil of where it wants to be. So happy days, so mark these at a meter and we start chopping. So I need to chop eight of these. Let's get on it. That's our legs all cut up. Now it's just a time to assemble these, nice and simple. So we're gonna assemble them in an L shape. So just like that, make sure everything is lined up. We're gonna drive the screws straight into them. Now, with these cutter type screws, there should be no need to pre-drill any of these. These screws are designed to go straight in. So we're just gonna drive them home. Make sure we're nice and lined up. Everything is flush. And it is as simple as that. Okay, 
Okay, there's our four legs. Took all of 10 minutes to put them together. So nice and quick. And they're really, really strong and stable in this L shape. Now, it's just gonna build an internal frame, but in this, one for a top and one for a shelf. Build the two of them the exact same and just screw them all together. And then we just need a couple of cross pieces to stable the whole thing up. And um, it's a really strong workbench and quick and easy to make. So my top is gonna to come to the edge of this, either side. So I just have to make sure that I measure my top. I include the 40 millimeters thickness for these um, 4x2s. So 4x2s are not actually 4x2s, they're actually three and three quarters by one and five eight inches or 40 millimeters by 95 millimeters. So they're sold as 40 by 100, but they're actually 40 by 95. So just include those measurements when you're putting your top on and you won't go too far wrong. So my internal frame, I have it written down there, is gonna be 2360 by 620. So nice and simple, let's get cutting it. Okay, on to assembling these frames, and it is really quick and easy. So they just sit inside in the L brackets of your legs, and you just screw everything together. This is now we're going to build this upside down, so we'll keep the top against the floor, because the floor is nice and flat. That'll keep our top nice and flat. And then we can put in our bottom shelf, and we can just flip the whole thing over, and we're good to go. So let's crack on. I'm just driving one screw into the middle of this frame to hold it together and then there's a load of screws going into the L brackets that hold the frame together so that's plenty so just want to make sure we keep everything nice and square and once our cuts are square we should be good just like that now the same up this end Hi guys, there we go, that's the first bench nearly complete. Now the camera died somewhere through me building this, so when the speed up section or the time lapse section, I'm not sure exactly where it ended. But it's all together now. The cross pieces are in for the top. I just have one cross piece in for the bottom because I'll make the rest of them for the shelf out of off cuts. I'll screw a bunch of them together just so I'm not chopping up good lengths that I'm gonna to need to build the rest of my bench. And I've added a middle leg and I have a front leg just standing off camera there. I would put that on after I slide in my shelf just so it's not in the way and then we can screw it on just to support the middle of the table. So it's a quick, it's a super quick and super easy way to make um, as yourself some workbenches or some storage areas. You can shelve this out if you wanted, you could put drawers in it, you can do anything else you wanted with it. It's nice and modular and nice and quick and the most important thing, it is extremely cost effective. It's just four by two two by four um, construction lumber and it goes together pretty quickly. Now, I made one slight error, it's not detrimental, but I'll show you now just the way I aligned the legs. Okay, here's the legs and here's where the mistake is made. This one is correct, this one is incorrect. Now, it's not detrimental, it's not really gonna affect anything, but this is bad practice. You can see I made the L shape with this, so you have a long side and you have a short side. So my long side is the right way around here. It catches my two boards, but my long side is only catching one of my boards on this side, if you can see what I'm saying. So my stretcher that comes across is only barely caught by this guy. Now, it's not the end of the world. I just drove a couple of screws in at an angle to catch the whole lot. It's good and strong. But uh, yeah, in my haste, I put the front two on like this. They should have been flipped around. Long side here, short side here, the same as this. So you're catching all your boards in your corner. So, so you can get your screws straight into everything. Uh, yeah, slightly mistakes, just watch for that. I was in a hurry, doing it on your own. If you have someone to help you with this, it'll go 10 times quicker. Um, yeah, so there you go. Don't do what I did. <laughs> okay then, that's my long side of my miter station now built and roughly in place. It's gonna be a little bit further down this way. So the next one I'm gonna build is gonna be the exact same thing. So I'll crack on and build that. I won't go through it all again because it's just gonna be the exact same thing, just a smaller version of this. And it's gonna house my, um, 
tool cabinet. So I might have to just do a slight little variation in how I make the shelf, but I'll show you that. But I won't go through the build because it's the exact same thing and you don't want to watch all that again. So I'll crack on and get that side built. And when we have the both sides built, then we can look at putting in our miter station in the middle and I'll get back to you then. So I get busy. Okay guys, this is where we're at. We have the two units in place now, so I built the second unit um, and I have the correct width now for my miter saw to sit in here. So now I need to build the miter saw table, set down just enough so that the bed of the miter saw will be exactly flush with the top of my workbenches. This workbench is nice and simple. I just kept it big enough to take my cabinet. So my roll-in cabinet is gonna roll in here. Then I have a shelf that's just sitting on the floor. That's gonna take my other two cabinets and they're gonna fit in there perfectly. So nice and simple. I'll give you a quick close up of this one. Okay, so you can see the second workbench framed out almost identical to the first one. I just left a gap down here and built a box in here to sit my bottom shelf on. Turned um, this one edgeways, so I just notched it, took it to the bandsaw and just notched it out big enough to take that for me too, to sit in against it, screwed in there. So that's this supported. I might put a leg in the back. I don't know if it's needed, but if I have some timber left over, I might just stick another leg there. But like I say, it's probably not needed. That's good and strong enough. So um, yeah, I'm gonna wheel my cabinet in here. So my tools will sit perfectly in there. And then my two other cabinets will sit on top of each other right in there. So that's that space. And then I have enough, I should have enough then to the right hand side of my miter saw to cut what I need. I can keep a long length to the left hand side of my miter saw. So there we go. Okay, so this is the space for my miter saw to sit in, and it's just going to take a nice simple frame. So I'm just going to screw to some 4B2s straight here and straight here, level them across, just make a nice simple frame. Then I have to fit this guy in, which is going to be the tricky part. So I'll probably have to lengthen the flexible hose. So I want to sit that in the middle at the back into the base of the frame to take the dust, and I also want to get my um, shop vac hose up into the back of my miter saw and I might build a cabinet around the miter saw then we'll see how we get on so first thing I'm going to do is just build this frame and get it screwed up so that's nice and simple so I'm just going to keep it exactly the right height down from my top so that my miter saw is level with my top so there's not much to this Okay guys, there we go. There is the frame for my miter saw stand. So now this is the cowl that's gonna sit down here like this. So I'm gonna make cut a piece of plywood to suit that can sit in the plywood. Take my flexible hose down to this worktop. So I might have to cut this stretcher out here to make room for that. So I have to make a frame in here because that'll weaken the worktop, but that's not a problem. So you a few, a few minutes work. So take my flexible hose down and up in here. And then, like I say, I can cut a section out of the plywood to sit this guy in. And hopefully when, it's, when the miter saw is here and it's kicking all that dust back in here, it's all gonna drop down and gets pulled out here. I will be using the shop vac as well. So I have to figure out a way of getting that hose up here too. But that's a good start for now, I think. Um, so now what I wanna do is start cutting the plywood and start getting the plywood tops on to some of these things. Uh, I think that's going to be my next move. So let's do that. Okay, guys, I'm set up to cut my first piece of worktop. So I have the plywood on the floor sitting on three 4x2s and I have another 4x2 clamped to the top to use as a straight edge for my circular saw. Now I give my right arm now for a track saw, but I haven't got one. So we have to make do with this setup and that's the best way I can do it. I also taped the plywood with some masking tape to hopefully stop this top from splintering. Um, hopefully that will stop us splintering too much and I can see the line through the masking tape so it should be good to go. So I'll get on and cut this now and uh, yeah, hopefully no disasters. Let's do it. worked like a charm. We got a nice clean cut. The masking tape worked perfectly, so that's a good tip for you. If you're worried about your plywood splintering, just masking tape your line and cut through it. Straight edge worked great. Circular saw is a little bit underpowered. It's only the the brushed version of the Milwaukee. It's not the actual brush. It's, it's not the fuel um, skill saw, so it's a little bit underpowered for this kind of work, but it'll do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get on and cut all my plywood. You've seen now how I do it. And uh, I need to open the doors of this place up because the heat is chronic in here. So it's going to be a lot of noise. So I get on and do that. And then when that's all done, I get back to you. Right, this is where we're at. A lot of work done. So all the worktops are cut out now. They're getting ready to be put in place. Um, I've cut a circle, a four inch hole 
for my pipe to go down through. I've done a bit of work on the frame of the bench here to accommodate that pipe. I'm gonna drop a, some black pipe straight through the worktop and then flexible hose underneath up into my, what's essentially now gonna be like a gully. So my cowl is gonna sit there, it's gonna act like a gully now for the sawdust. So my next job is to take the jigsaw now and cut this guy out to fit this in. So let's get on that. Okay, the shop is in a complete mess and I can hardly move in here now. So we need to tidy some stuff up. So what I'm gonna do now is move the miter saw. So I'm gonna take it off its stand and put it into its permanent place. So we'll fix down the miter saw tabletop, put the miter saw in place, plumb up the dust extraction and get the vacuum in where it's gonna live and get the power leads up through the worktop. So let's get on that and uh, try and make a small bit of space in here. <laughs> okay, our miter saw is in place now. You can see how much room you have to leave for the back of this. It's a quite a big miter saw, so it sticks out quite a long way, but that's not what we can do. Now, the next thing we need to do is make sure that we're perfectly level with our top, or even slightly above our top. It's better to be above it than below it because our reference surface is the miter saw. The same with the miter saw fences and its base. They're our reference surfaces. So everything else we have to put on doesn't matter as much as these. And we're looking, I'm looking like a little bit in it on this side. So I can just slip this under. So I'm slightly high, this table is a little, so maybe the floor is raising slightly. So what I think I'll do is I'll shim the saw up just enough to be proud of this top because these are my reference surfaces. And once these are slightly above my top, I'm good. And uh, are perfectly in line, but I don't think I'm gonna get absolutely perfectly in line. So we go slightly above. Okay, so a couple of shims and a few screws and that should be good. And I'm going to call it for today because it's getting late now and I've done a lot of work. So we'll continue with this tomorrow. Okay guys, day two. It's the following morning. There's still stuff all over the floor here, but I went ahead and got the two bottom shells in. So they cut them the same way as I cut the top, exact same thing. So I just went ahead and stuck them in and screwed them in because there's no point in showing you guys that. It's the same thing as putting the tops on. So the tops are on, they're not fit in place yet. So I have a little bit of adjustment to do on them. The bottom shells are in and screwed in place. So now I can get my tool chests down the end here. So we fit them in now, and then we look at whether we put a fence on top and we look at building a cowl around this miter saw. So let's get to it. Okay, so I measured this one a little bit too exact. <laughs> this one sits down inside in this one, so I measured the total height. I should have allowed the little gap that sits inside in it so I could actually get the two pieces in. So this has been a monumental struggle, but uh, it's gonna fit in, hopefully. So hopefully I don't have to get it back out again. Okay, actually with a little brute force and ignorance, it went in there. So I made it exactly the size of the toolbox. So um, yeah, lesson learned. I should have left myself a couple of mil on top, but what harm, it's a perfect fit. And a perfect fit is a perfect fit, even if we have to struggle. Okay, now that we have our toolboxes exactly where I want them, right beside my workbench, so I don't have to keep walking up and down the workshop. Everything is nicely to hand now and slotted in there. Let's look at getting some sort of dust protection around this thing. So, this is a pretty big miter saw and it has a pretty big swing. It bevels left and right, and uh, because of its size, it's not gonna to be too easy to build a cowl around it. So what I'm thinking, if I drop it, I'll just give you a look. So you can see how far this handle comes out. It comes out to here, and if we bevel to the other side, that's over to 45, we can still go further. So let's see, 47 degrees is the max on this. So there we go. That's where I need to be. 
and the same on this side if I drop it to 47 degrees there's my line there so that'll be a pretty massive box to build so what I'm thinking is if I just build a box in behind the handle and keep it in here up like this and maybe then get a fabric to come around that it can move in so because most of the dust does go down and in and that should catch most of it so I'm going to keep the box back in here back away from the handle that's as far back as it goes so I can get my measurements from there build a box up around here nice and simple and yeah let's get on it that's our cowl all finished up so I left the top overhang the two sides so I can put something maybe I have these two foam drawer runners out of the tool cabinets that I'm thinking about stapling on there just to add a little bit extra um, dust protection and it's flexible enough that the saw can just push them out of the way so I might stick one of those either side and we'll see how we go so everything is in I put my two side panels on my hose and my power cord are running through the side of that up to the top of the saw there so everything's in place dust extraction is all hooked up I'm perfectly level now at my top so I shimmed my saw up slightly so we are perfect there so that's all good to go so that's more or less the Meyer saw station itself complete now now what I have to do is tidy up this whole shop and decide what I'm going to do with the front I could I have enough material to put a second drawer or shelf in this unit if I wanted to but uh, we'll have a look at that now. I'll tidy up the shop, get everything in place, and we'll see what we're gonna do next. Right guys, we are almost there. So everything is almost in place now. I've added another shelf here so I can store all my socket sets. I have my sanders down underneath. I have my other shop vac here. Other tool cabinet fits in nicely here. And I've put this little shroud made of that drawer lining around the miter saw just to help keep some of that dust in there and it's pulling nicely down below from the main dust extractor, which is great. So, next thing I wanna do is just a little finishing touch. The edge of plywood is quite brittle, and if you hit off it, it breaks and splinters. So I wanna just cover that. So I have a few lengths of that four by two left over. So I'm gonna use that to edge this, and it should do a nice job on it. So, a couple of nice 45s, and we're gonna screw it straight to it. And uh, you give me a nice hard edge and these are rounded over already, so it'll be a nice rounded edge, and this'll take a bit of an impact. And I can clamp stuff to it as well if I need to. So, let's get making this. built complete with worktops and storage area now hopefully this has been useful to you 
If you have enjoyed this, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. That's the best way you can help me out. And if you're not subscribed, just hit the subscribe button below because there will be more content coming up like this in the future. So yeah, hopefully that's been useful for you guys. It is a miter saw station now, complete with workbenches and storage area, all made from four by twos and a couple of sheets of plywood. I bought four sheets of plywood. I still have a full one left and a little bit of another one outside. So roughly two and two thirds sheets of plywood it took to make it and 25 eight foot lengths of four by two. So it's a very, very cost effective way to build yourself a miter saw station and workbenches. So yeah, there you go guys. I'm pretty happy with it. I've gained a whole bunch of space in my shop now, which is fantastic. All that stuff is now stored underneath the miter saw and underneath those benches, unlike the way I had it before when I had the miter saw on its stand, there was nothing underneath. It was all wasted space, but now everything is built in and my tool cabinets and my tools are right beside my workbench now, so I can just walk over and back to them, which is nice. I don't have to walk all the way up and down my shop to get screwdrivers and stuff. So there you go guys, a miter saw station is now in place. Happy days. So I need a glass of water now because it is like an oven in here. So I shall talk to you in the next one guys. Take it easy.